Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our team of the year and we're continuing with our right winger of the season. So we'll kick things off with uh, Sadio Mane. Yeah. Because um, well, he was the, the PFA player of the season, or yeah. for the right wing. Yeah, came in the PFA team of the year on the right wing and kind of probably quite deserved on the balance of things with the amount of goals he scored this season. Like 13 goals is the most of any of the players we're going to talk about um, yeah. today. And Open. I think the most vital thing is maybe that Liverpool only lost three games. He's played with them all season, which for a team who have really struggled when... He's not been in the team. It just shows how much and how vital he's been to Liverpool. Yeah, the difference season. when he went to the Northern Cup of Nations, he was just completely... Liverpool were deflated. They they went on that terrible run. Same towards the end of the season. They've kind of tailed yeah. it off. You don't know if they're really going to get top four now because he's just provided so much pace to that team. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he brought them up a level. As well as that, like he, when he was signed from Sam in the summer, everyone was like, oh, that's a big... Uh, Big price for a player yeah, and stuff like that. Four and a half million or something. Yeah, you look at yeah, we squad. signed Balassi for for that. <laughs> we signed yeah. to go for that. <laughs> Try that one. <laughs> yeah, but you know what so I mean. So I, I just think yeah, he's, he's he's definitely been one of the signs of the seasons. Yeah. Uh, the season. He'd be my pick for right wing. Uh, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't didn't really want to put a Liverpool player in there. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to like go um, head over heart for this one. Like, well, for me anyway. Oh, yeah, he's been yeah. definitely the standout performer. Yeah. Um, in terms of out and out wingers, but I suppose some of the guys we're going to talk about in this as well aren't. Yeah. They aren't played. They played on. They played on the on the wing, but they're not necessarily right wingers. Yeah. Just one last kind of bit on Mane as well is you think about what Liverpool have had to do when he's not been in the team, be it the African Cup of Nations or now at the end of the season they've actually had to bring in a re-year Sturridge and kind of change the way they play. Whereas before they essentially played with a false nine with Roberto Firmino a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. and kind of played with Mane and Coutinho out wide where they could use Mane's pace to get in behind, whether it be a back three or a back four, get in behind the full backs or the wing backs. And I think without that, they do miss that little bit of industry and that is certainly the pace that he brings to There is a attack. thing with the, with the out-and-out winger as well. When they're, I was watching Pochettino you know, when he was at Southampton. He had this, Jay Rodriguez was his out-and-out winger. Yeah. And he placed someone out wide like that would just stay wide and Alana yeah. was the one that would come in and it just creates this weird sense of width yeah. that one goes down and the other one comes in and jockeys in as a second striker which is generally Coutinho or Firmino yeah. if they're not there or and then you know did Koeman not bring in Mane for Southampton no 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 but in, in, I don't mean in terms of Mane himself but in terms of it's it's just a popular trend that's coming oh, in now is the one yeah. kind of speedy winger that sticks out oh, and never, one that never mind that. Seven, <laughs> like so. you even go back to because obviously Liverpool club with Borussia Dortmund when they were in their pomp it was Goethe and Royce yeah. who kind of played as those two wide players and Royce kind of gives you a lot of width on the left and gives you a lot of pace and Goethe's a lot more guile and kind of floats in and in between the midfield and the attack and kind of, as you say, gives you like that second striker, that kind of inside forward type player yeah. who just drifts in and kind of makes he makes the fullback as much as anything have to decide if I'm going to stay out here and defend the opp or opposing fullback or if I'm going to come in yeah. and take this man. It just creates confusion in the defence of who's supposed to pick up this guy when he comes into the middle. And because of that, they're stretched a bit. And if the winger beats his man on the outside, there's going to be space inside to play That's the ball. Part of the reason as well, you've seen Alana back at his best this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, because well, from it, would you have him in your team? Um, would he be your pick? No, he wouldn't be my pick. Okay. What about you, I don't know. I, 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 I think we'll talk about a few others and then I might make All a right, well, we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll go down the list anyway. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll, Christian Eriksen. Right, he has to be in there, obviously. Yeah, he's, he's got the most assists this season from that position. Yeah. That's where it kind of floats as well, isn't it? Like the out net winger of Mane or Ericsson, who is playing out in the right, but he's yeah. drifting in the whole game. He's moving across. Yeah, most assists. He in terms of key passes, he's miles ahead of anyone else in in that that kind of um, in that area as well. Yeah. He's been one of the driving forces at Tottenham. He's kind of the unsung hero, in my opinion, behind Ali and, and Kane because he's yeah. not directly getting the goals. But yeah. his passing is just. Phenomenal. I haven't His seen delivery is very good, even from corners and that as well. That's where I think he actually gets set down. When you watch him week in, week out, his corners rarely beat the first man. Did he but not set up a, con or a corner? We, you know, we have or scored or from some corners, but he, he's. Did he scored it? Yeah, he set yeah, up well, yeah, free, yeah. Yeah. Or He set up from a free. But generally, in terms of he could actually be doing better, but his ball, when he's when the ball's in open play and he takes it in, it's just phenomenal. And his cut and passes, cut and defences are just. Amazing, the Ali goal a couple of weeks ago as well, like yeah. in, in the end the FA or the FA Cup semi final. Yeah, and the ball for uh, Kane. I know Kane made it look easy, but yeah, I know oh, it's he, he's something else in, in that sense. 
Um, we Ericsson as well, like you just look at it and you say the unsung hero of their team, but you mentioned the United game um, on Sunday and when Twan Zebe was put in central midfield for Manchester United, you assumed that he was going to pick up Deli Ali and do the kind of job Herrera did on yeah. Eden Hazard at Stamford Bridge. Um, but he actually went and picked up Ericsson for the most part. And even with a player devoted to being on Christian Eriksen for the whole first half, Eriksen looked, for me, the best player on the pitch in the first half. He just finds... Eriksen might not touch the ball for 10 minutes, but then he'll just find a pocket of space in between the lines. And when he does find that the pass is always perfect and it's always crisp, and he finds either Kane or Ali or one of the fullbacks out wide, he kind of... I think he's perfect for Spurs in terms of just distributing the play and keeping them in a good attacking position more so than maybe being the one who's going to score 20 goals from midfield like Ali does. Well, he has scored eight. Yeah. yeah and Deli has scored 17. So, I mean, he's chipped yeah. in with goals as well as assists, which he's is helped him. He's scored a few got screamers. A, yeah, he has scored a yeah, few crackers. Yeah. He's also got this this thing where I've been watching a few a few videos of, like on him yeah. where players, are, their teams are putting kind of two people on him and his movement off the ball is dragging players out, which yeah. is creating space and creating opportunities. Like his... He's not just on the ball when he's on the ball. His movement off the ball has created so much like space for you know goals for Spurs because yeah. the way he pulls out and the way he clops in, he's a very clever footballer. Wouldn't think he's so young that he's been around that long. Would you pick him for you? Uh, I I'm gonna have to go with the heart and say I would pick him. Now, but is he a right winger? He's played out there, but you know. Okay, but well, like I'd, I'd pick him to, in this team to, to shape him. my your team. Yeah, to shape my team. He's gonna have to go in there. Yeah, I go with okay. Jamie. Okay, so uh, yeah. we'll move on to Pedro. Of Chelsea, and I think he's he's been classed this year when, yeah. when called upon. Uh, he's played thirty four games, eight goals, eight assists, uh, pass success is eighty two point seven percent. So, I mean, yeah. he, he hasn't had too shab- shabby a season. I mean, his goal against Everton uh, a few it's weeks ago uh, would w- we'll get him in this list alone. Yeah, um, I think Pedro. I think it can't be understated how vital Pedro has been to Chelsea, especially in the second half of the season. Mm. I think his pace when they do break kind of creates just so many options and so much space for Hazard and Costa to be able to, you know, create the chances and create the goals. I know so he's got eight goals and eight assists, which isn't bad for an attacking midfielder in a front three, but it's not it's not world beating numbers, but I think it's his influence around the pitch and he just buzzes around the pitch constantly and he kind of Although you're picking him for the right wing, you'll often see Pedro pop up maybe on the left or yeah. in central midfield driving with the ball. He loves to drive with the ball and distribute a pass and stuff. Like He doesn't complete that many dribbles. He only competes um, 1.6 per game on average, which isn't great on paper. But it's the amount of times he will start a dribble and then just distribute a pass rather than take a shot or put in a cross, which I think really benefits Chelsea and just how they move the ball forward and how they create space for their other attacking players. Yeah, the other thing where he's been very vital this year is the experience he's brought in. Like Because he's yeah. won so much at Barcelona and he's just a natural winner. Like Back to your saying, that goal against Everton, yes, it was a screamer, but at the same time, Chelsea looked like they were going nowhere with yeah. Everton. Yeah. They looked like it was gonna, it looked like it was kind of Everton's game to Nick, yeah. and then he yeah. pops up with that. And that's where he's really, as well, like added to Chelsea. That, that winning mentality and the, the kind of drive, he's hungry for the trophy. And he's that's another aspect of the game that I suppose he can't really judge on stats, but he's also really yeah. Really I mean, helpful. even when he was playing with Chelsea, he did. Or sorry, not uh, with Chelsea, with Barcelona, he did always score in, in big games. Yeah. Stuff he scored in Champions League finals. And I'm pretty sure he scored for Spain in uh, one of the finals they were in as well. Yeah. So he's no stranger to to a big game too no, when he can turn up when when, when needs to be. And he's pretty clinical in the box in and yeah. around the box it's kind of surprising with him though isn't it like he was at Barcelona for years he was never really the main man at Barcelona like he was kind of always in and out yeah, off the bench like Alexis Sanchez yeah. for them yeah it, it's it's interesting when you see players like that because he has done so much and he does turn up in the big games yeah. but he was never really considered you know one of the main men in those yeah. front three over well, the years well we talked about like in the right wing video about how exceptional Alexis Definitely. Sanchez or left wing video about how exceptional Alexis Sanchez has been, but as you say, like Pedro and Sanchez were at Barcelona at the same time. But Pedro kept Alexis Sanchez out of that Barcelona yeah, team that's for fair as well. essentially his entire time there. He didn't really get a run of games unless Pedro was injured. Mm. So Pedro was vital to that Barcelona team under Guardiola as well. So I think he's just he's he's a born winner. Like he won six trophies in his first senior season at Barcelona, which kind of says it all. And he scored <laughs> in all six of those competitions. So. He's just a player who, as you say, gets a big goal, score can score some fancy goals as well, but his overall influence for Chelsea has been, been phenomenal this season. 
That kind of brings you on to the next lad, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it brings you on to Willian. You kind of in the first half of the season had been very, very good, yeah, and he, he, then he unfortunately had his mother pass away, and that kind of really allowed Pedro to make that right hand side his own. But in the first half of the season, I think Willian was pretty exceptional for yeah, Chelsea. Going back to last season, dreadful season for Chelsea last season, but like he was. Yeah, know, he was, where he, he, was, he was our standout player. I think he won their player of the year last year, won the yeah. young player of the year, won everything he did. And he was really, really a standout performer last season, unfortunately. Um, with the pass from his mother, though, he, he kind of slipped out and slipped out of the pecking order. But when he's yeah. came on again, he still looked great. Like, to assist, an assist there the night for John Terry. Yeah. Um, he's, he's played 33, but 19 of those were so... It's kind yeah. hard to get back in. But point he's, Pedro. he's been vital off the bench in some yeah. games, though, when they've kind of... Well, they killed off either. everything with him. Yeah, sorry to keep bringing up the everything. Last sorry, week. he killed off Chess first. He didn't killed he? my yeah. heart as well. Um, <laughs> he, d- you know, he kind of comes on for Chelsea and can sometimes come on for Pedro Hazard or can come on and be there alongside yeah. the two of them. Maybe come on for Costa and let Hazard kind of drift into that forward role as well. And he's very important to them in that way in terms of he's kind of their super sub. Of yeah, in, in terms of things. Yeah, his, his dead ball as well. Like he scored so many of those free kicks. They've just gone over bounced and gone in not touched anyone like it's he's got a little bit of a freak kind of foot on him or he can put those free- touch on uh, Ross Barkley because he's played the majority of the season when we had a we had a dodgy run uh, we had a good run starting off then we went into a bit of a dodgy run and then when Schneiderlin and that came in uh, Barkley seemed to have taken up a new role and he was kind of yeah. put out on the right wing and with that with the license of having Ghana and Schneiderlin dropping in it gave Coleman Loises to get forward, which created a lot of space for Barkley to yeah. play in, kind of like Ericsson mm. on that right wing role. And and a, a lot of people give him a lot of stick and say uh, he hasn't been that good that season. But I watched him on a regular basis, and yeah. he was like un, unreal in most games. Like, there was two games that he didn't for me didn't turn up in, and that was the Liverpool game and the United game. Yeah. But in every other game, I seen him. He turned up in. And. Like, I, know, I know he doesn't agree with that, but <laughs> if you look at it, he's got eight eight assists, five goals, he's got an eighty two point four percent pass success, and he's got two point four uh, key passes per game, which is pretty yeah. decent. And it's the most by uh, any English player too. Yeah, and he still doesn't get in that English squad, so it's beyond me. Yeah, I it doesn't make sense to me that Barkley is kind of so derided by lots of kind of English media. I think there was so much hype with him when he came through originally at Everton and people now have expected him to become like this world class player at this point. Yeah, which well well actually when a, when Tom Davis came in the team it yeah. gave him a boost because he took the I'm the new young boy yeah. on the scene. Kind of seems to take that pressure off him. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut yeah, you off. No, no. Um but it reminds me a bit of he actually reminds me a bit of watching and I know as an Everton fan, you might agree or disagree with this. It reminds me of watching Wayne Rooney three or four years ago. In that kind of, where he drops in behind and he's quite a... Pe- yeah, but Barty's you're... quite a powerful runner with the ball as well. And he's got those little moments of magic, but he can be very frustrating at times as well yeah, to watch. Wayne Rooney was a much better player. Oh yeah, yeah of course, yeah. but the same yeah. style of player. I can, you, you, I can see where you're coming from with it though, yeah. yeah. He's easy to blame as well. Rooney, Rooney was player. a was a top player at the age of 18 and you can see he was a top player at yeah. the age of, Barkley had the potential he's yeah. getting to 23, 24 now and you know if he doesn't start kicking on or, or, or if he do, maybe he maybe he does need to go somewhere else yeah, to, to progress because I feel like that Everton fans are very hard on him and he yeah. was getting for a, lot, for a few seasons he was getting booed for every little thing he did and I don't think Martinez did him any, any favours no. he was like go on out there and do like do what you want and he was losing the ball and he was getting yeah. booed, and any any time any uh, he lost the ball or anything, there was just whistles and everything going around. So you can imagine if for a young lad, your own fans doing that too. He hasn't really had, I, don't, I wouldn't say the best guidance of managers though. Like now, Kuman's come in. Kuman will develop him as a player if yeah. he stays. Kuman takes if he, goes, if he goes, yeah. exactly, yeah. But like Martinez, been late day Moyes, yeah. like they're are they're not really Moyes the be- didn't trust him. No, but they're not really the best managers to to you know to develop them. They're, they don't they don't really stand out to me. If I was a young player yeah. playing, yeah, um, I wouldn't. But he developed James McCarthy, Martinez this. Yeah, okay, okay, McCarthy. But like going forward, you know the Everton team were a bit ropey, a bit of stability in the team, and he has looked good this year. For me though, in terms of the big games, is where he doesn't show up, and. 
that's where where he's been needed. He does um, like he he ha- he has that little bit of dirty streak in him. I like that in a player. The weird thing is he turns up in the games against Arsenal and Man City, but when you put him against the Chelsea's or or Liverpool's or, or Man Man United's, he he do, he goes missing. I think it's when kind of big players get in amongst them and close down the space. Arsenal and Chelsea, or sorry, Arsenal and City aren't really teams who will close down the space on yeah. you defensively yeah. they're trying to but mentally sit just off you a little against, you know? trying to sit off you a little bit you get that little bit more space attacking wise against City and Arsenal than you do against your Chelsea's and your United's and obviously Liverpool because it's a derby yeah. but I think people bl- Everton fans seem to blame Barkley and blame Barkley for years now but I think systemat- it's systematic of Everton to not turn up in big games at the minute like for individual players Romelu Lukaku has gone missing in yeah, multiple big definitely. games this season Agreed. Yeah. and for that I think the blame is a lot it's shouldered on Barkley a lot at Everton I think yeah. Lukaku yeah. gets away with an awful lot when they don't play uh, well. he doesn't really not by Everton fans he gets away with by everybody else because yeah. they read what the paper the says the and what, what, what's the Eng- saying, English so. media though again they're just great at bigging up their own and then yeah. when they don't do well they absolutely but slate them it's ridiculous it's English, it's English tabloids and they've done it for yeah. years and it's not just with sport they've done it with entertainment the politics and everything they'll big someone up and big them up to be this mm. big hero and this next great thing and everything and try and claim but Conor at, McGregor to be uh, British, British. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at the first sign of weakness or the first time that they don't do something good they will jump all over them and they'll make a story of it and they'll make a controversy out of it and I think he struggled to deal with moving into that limelight at such a young age where he was so highly thought of yeah, and there was these so 50 million figures being yeah, thrown about, about about him when he was 20 years old which is a is a big ask for like a young lad from Merseyside like that yeah I agree but really like, you, look, you, look, you, you look at like Beckham could take the, the mantle on yeah he had it worse than oh, yeah. after the Argentina mm. and see me only thing anyway we'll, we'll, we'll get off that and we'll move on to uh Wilfred Zaha has an honourable mention. I think the top five we have, we just went through, oh, and then we'll give. Uh, my, I, Wilfred Zaha, I'll actually start. Wilfred Zaha is actually my pick for the right hand side. I think he's been absolutely vital to Crystal Palace, especially in the second half of the season with Allardyce. He didn't have the greatest the first half seasons, but no one at Palace did. It's a bit of a while. Yeah. But no. at the end of the day, I think without Wilfred Zaha, Crystal Palace aren't still in the Premier League this year. Those goals and assists are. Because a lot of the assists, four, or four of his nine assists this season have been for Christian Benteke. Which means he's created four of Benteke's goals as well as scoring his seven. So he's created goals for the big striker who's also kept them up. Yeah. So he's been quite important for that. And also down that right wing he completes over four dribbles a game. Which is ridiculous for any sense. winger at any level to complete that many dribbles in a game. So he drives them forward and I think he's... Not single-handedly kept Palace up, but along with Chaco and Milovievich since January, have yeah, yeah. very much kept yeah, you know, them in the people division. People now are going to tell me that I'm wrong, but uh, Wilfred Zaha actually plays for Ivory Coast, so he's not actually English. So. I didn't say English. Though. No, no, but just in case yeah, anyone starts to give me a stick in the comments, tell me I'm wrong. I just wanted uh, okay. to put, put that out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd i agree with you, Zaha. Again, I'd gone probably over hard. Zaha, as an out-and-out winger, if your words come for a pure out-and-out winger, I would probably go with Zaha as well. He's looked phenomenal, and it's not even in the small games against Chelsea. Yeah, that's he's looked my big thing. Chelsea great. And like he's and he's just he took the absolute piss out of Arsenal. Like yeah. he just ran them riot. He's not afraid to do stuff on the ball. Maybe the la- like the last couple of seasons and even the start of this season, he was trying tricks. They just weren't coming off. He was diving. There was that instance with, with Allardyce actually was it when Allardyce at Sunderland. I think it might and, have been. And yeah, he and he years, dives yeah. and the mascot dies then. Yeah. Or was it Wofford? Wofford, I can't remember. Yeah. Wofford, yeah. Wofford. And like he just wasn't wasn't doing it. He like a little bit of a tantrum. Now yeah. it's just like Do you think he benefited from the African Nations cool? I, I don't I think, know. I think he's benefited from playing at a higher level no. at international football yeah. and not kind of being where for ages he was just thrust into the England under twenty ones and was just constantly just sitting going there, like, to play the San Marino under twenty ones and a needless yeah, yeah. qualifier. Whereas now he's going and he's got a purpose and I guess something to be excited for at it international level worked, like, and he looks at some of the other wingers that the Ivory Coast have as well they've got some decent players and he needs to now play well mm. at a consistent level he obviously wants to play international football if he didn't wait for England if he went to go and play for the Ivory Coast having played underage for England so I think he's got an added motivation now where he wants to play at a World Cup for the Ivory Coast he wants to be yeah. a star yeah, with, with Palace as well they don't have a bad team you look around yeah. their team they actually have good players you got Kaboy Ben Teke 
Uh, Townsend, Sarah, Townsend, Milovievich from Lazio was an outstanding yeah. signing for them in January. He yeah, shared so them it's up. It's not like they've been, they've been lacking options. They've just been shite pretty much because yeah. Pardew is a terrible manager. Yeah, well, they lacked the manager in the first half yeah. of the season. Yeah. Really, Alan Pardew will do for you for about twelve so months. He's, yeah, he's, he's your pick, soon. is he? Yeah, Wilfred Zaha is my pick. Uh, be your ex. So uh, <laughs> we'll move on to our last two uh, honourable mentions: uh, Raheem Sterling and Riyad Mahrez. Uh, just put kind of Mahrez yeah. in there from last season, just kind Sterling. of compare him to this season. Sterling, in my opinion, he had a great start to the season, and then mm. he's Stanley been better than last. He's been better. He's an he improvement been, to last yeah, year, but he's, he's still averages. He's definitely. Oh no, Guardiola, no doubt, will get the will get the best out of him. Mm. But Sane has just just looked immense on the other side. So he's just. Yeah. He's kind of, you know, he hasn't really been mentioned. He has had a decent season, seven goals, seven assists, but he's just... He's, uh, I think for me, he lacks, and I think Liverpool fans will 100% agree with us. Now he's got seven goals and stuff, but he lacks an end product. Yeah. His finishing in front of goal is it's just utterly... Yeah, he's missed some sitters. Utterly horrendous. It's always been horrendous, and until he improves that, he's not going to be considered... Mm. A really top level player in the Premier League yeah. or in Europe. He wouldn't be fearing it coming against up, up against him. Oh no, absolutely not. Like I'm a fan of a now League One club, and if we played Manchester City in the FA Cup, he wouldn't be the player I was afraid of. They leave him out there. Yeah, he can be out there yeah. and get in on goal because I don't trust him to score. So other yeah, players, not man. Yeah. But I thought at the start of the season he had got it. I th- thought he'd start to get something. Yeah. And get that end product in him. He mm. did look good, but it just fell, fell off. Yeah, I can see what you mean. The first kind of month of the season, he, he looked very good. Yeah, he won't play it a month. Yeah. The first Taylor month of the season, he was yeah. exceptional and he's just, just been off. Mare, he's been something. terrible. Six goals, three assists. Can you compare him to last season? I just I just don't think he wanted to be there this year. I think nah. he, wanted, he didn't get his move to Arsenal. He sulked the whole way through he the season. He'll go this summer. I, I, I fought it at the end of last season and I think Leicester have made a massive mistake in not selling him in the summer. Because Riyad Mahrez has had a season and a half where he's been that top level player in his entire career. And yeah. at the end of the day, Riyad Mahrez is 26. It's not like he's 22 years old and yeah. just came through and had a really breakthrough season. He's 26 years old. This is pretty much as good as he's going to get, especially as a winger. And there was like 40 million, 50 million being banded around as a prize for him. If someone had offered me 30, 35 million for him, he'd have been out the door. Because yeah. he his attitude, he just seems very. I think I, I, he seemed very laid back as a footballer yeah. and as a person and I think he won the Premier League. He showed up in some of the Champions League games which would show me that he's maybe doing a Musa Sissoko yeah. at Newcastle where if he was on TV or in a big game he'd turn he up. To be saying, yeah. But he just hasn't turned up enough. You can see in the stats. Yeah, like. I think 77.4% for an attacking player as your pass success rate is pretty horrendous. To be yeah. under 80% yeah. is not good what but to be clearly to? under it. Oh, it's, and things in terms of like physicality and stuff now that they're really having to battle out games where they're yeah. you know teams have, have have started to understand that kind of four four two the way they were playing last year once everyone understood that and he has to actually bite in and get himself into a tackle. I was watching him take a corner there a couple of weeks ago and the corner flag was thicker than his legs. I think yeah. Yeah. he's he just doesn't have it in that sense. He needs to be in a fancy team. They could as you said they could have got fifty million from last year. There's yeah. talk of Arsenal and Tottenham going from this year for thirty million. They should have really cashed in last year yeah. when he was on on top form. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we've rambled on a bit uh, enough here now, so uh, we'll uh, let you guys decide who you want to pick in the comments below. So don't forget to like and subscribe.